just a few days, Ukraine has crushed the positions that the enemy had been fortifying for months. Why will the militaries of the whole world study the counteroffensive of the Ukrainian army? And how, in a classic David and Goliath clash, the winner is the one who was predicted to lose? In today's United 24 video, we'll talk about the unique operation of the armed forces of Ukraine and learn how to defeat the biggest country on earth. Lieutenant Colonel of Ukrainian Army tells about the counteroffensive in Kharkiv region conducted in the northeast of Ukraine in early September. Ключові військові з усього світу, в принципі, спілкують. І всі вони оцінюють цю операцію як абсолютно блискучу та кажуть, що вона увійде в усі підручники з тактики та стратегії. Це прорив у військовій справі. Цією операцією українці приголомшили усі. In just a few days, Ukrainians liberated 6,000 square kilometers where hundreds of thousands of people live. To capture these territories, the Russians had to spend a few months. With the help of the HIMARS systems and Allied artillery, the armed forces of Ukraine have taken three bridges over the Dnipro River under fire control. Russian logistics is crushed, and panic among Russians and their collaborators grows in occupied Kherson. The possibility of the Ukrainian counteroffensive is fleeing in the air. And it starts. Ukrainian forces simultaneously attack from three directions. They liberate a few towns and villages while actively destroying the enemy's ammunition storages and headquarters. Russians urgently send their best troops down south, including those from the northeast of Ukraine, near the great city of Kharkiv. Eventually, the Ukrainian southern offensive slows down to rapidly unfold in the northeast. September 6th, Ukrainian troops started advancing in the Balaklia, Volokhivyar, Shevchenkovit direction. September 7th and 8th, AFU have liberated Balaklia and penetrated occupants' positions at least 50 kilometers deep. Pace of this offensive matches the one of Blitzkrieg. September 9th, occupants retreat from the cities of Izum, Kupiansk and Veliky Berluk. The 237th Guards Assault Regiment of the Russian Armed Forces ceases to exist. September 10th, the Russian Ministry of Defense claims there are troops to regroup near Balaklia and Izum. In reality, these troops were crushed and have retreated to the east. September 11th and 12th, Russian troops have retreated from the Ukrainian cities of Kozacha Lopan, Dvorichna, Svatove. Yellow and blue flag now waves over these authentic Ukrainian towns. Велика радість від того, що ми нарешті повернулись і ми їх звільняємо. Люди нас чекають. В одному селі розгорнули прапор, коли ми заїжджали. Люди стоять, плачуть, обіймають нас. І не дивлячись на те, що в них не було опалення, світла, води, вони приносять нам їжу, турбуються за нас, питають, що ми чим вони можуть нам ще бути корисними, як вони нам можуть допомогти. New York Times states. The fall of the strategically important city of Izum in Ukraine's east is the most devastating blow to Russia since its humiliating retreat from Kyiv. The world's media explode praising Ukrainian fighters. According to the General Staff of Ukraine, 2,850 occupants and 590 vehicles were destroyed between the 6th and 11th of September. The cost of this weaponry, estimated by Forbes, exceeds 670 million US dollars. I want to just say that this is information for just to understand that, in general, in Kharkiv, we have captured techniques on one mechanized and one tank brigade. Here you can fix that Russia has become one of the most important exporters of weapons and weapons to the Ukrainian army. Within few September days, Ukraine liberates thousands of kilometers of its soil. But how is it possible if Russia has spent months capturing these territories and building fortifications to repel any possible counteroffensive? Well, there is an answer. If you fight only with the rules, it usually goes on long, hard and hard. Like in Russia. A good general can be able to solve the task in a standard way. We did it like this. Almost no artillery fire, only mobile groups on tanks and armored carriers that are rapidly charging an enemy's positions. 
Russians couldn't figure out what was going on before they noticed the enemy's troops behind their backs. The enormous advantage in armored vehicles, artillery and ammunition doesn't let Russia break Ukrainian resistance. During the seven months of war, Ukrainians captured more than 2,000 units of enemy's equipment. Among them, 567 units were captured during the counteroffensive. Skillful warfare and Western weapons in their arms do the impossible. In this clash of David and Goliath, one who was considered weaker seems to be winning. In mid-September, Putin announced partial military mobilization. His idea is to throw a few more hundreds of thousands of soldiers into the war against Ukraine. In Russia, this event has embraced an unofficial name of funeralization. Online searches for emigrating from Russia have skyrocketed. After six months, even Russians themselves understand that going to war in Ukraine is a one-way ticket. What else does Russia have in its sleeve? Apart from throwing a few hundred thousands of people in hell, attacking civil infrastructure. On the 11th of September, a rocket struck the Kharkiv thermal power plant, the second most powerful in Ukraine. Subway trains stopped, trolley buses got short-circuited, and millions of civilians were left without electricity. Українську землю від цієї мразоти, але треба розуміти, що все це дається дорогою ціною. Ворог не тікає, він за пекло б'ється за кожне село, за кожну лісосмугу і просто так не піде. І хоча зараз є таке відчуття, що нібито наша бере, але попереду ще багато роботи. You can participate in it. Ukrainians have proved that they can not only defend themselves but reclaim their territories as well. They still require modern weapons to win the battle for liberty. Support Forces of Light by sending a donation or sharing this video.